Hey, it's Joe Glassman Automator, and I'm getting back in the habit. I'm going to try to make these videos once a week to show what I've worked on this week. I shouldn't say me because it's really the guys, Irfan and Zayas, doing most of the stuff. But um, it's, it's things where we've you know automated things. And it's just great because I had some feedback from one of our hero members mentioning that those were really helpful because it's hard to understand what you can do with AutoHotKey. And so I'm not diving into code in most of these. I'm just going to show kind of what we worked on, right, to give you an idea to think about it. Um, one and, and you can do it yourself if you want to hire us fine like that's you know and often the code will be available at some point on our website but custom code we don't release anyway let's jump into it here so what i did was i just used this tool to say look in the last seven days of things that i think have been modified yeah so we're gonna start off here so brent brent by the way is a dentist out of australia and he runs a practice. He has two practices, actually, I think, two different websites they get lead gen from. He gets emails that come in, and then they have to process them for new patients. So we wrote a script that goes through um, using Outlook to read the email, process it. He uses this tool. It's an archaic tool called Genie. Um, it's actually out of Australia. But their tool is really a real pain in the butt to automate. We had a a real fun time trying different approaches to automate it. Uh, anyway, it takes their information from the form. We were going to use an API to do it, but he wanted to, it was, it did make sense in this case to stick with emails and we, we add them and it, it allows their employees to basically hit a button and it dumps them into their database for them, prompting them if there is a problem that they can update it, but it's, it's really cool slip tool. So we made a little tweak to that. Um, this backup to now studio I'm still using Studio both in V1. I do most of my stuff in V1, but now I'm working in V2. And we have a V2 version of Studio. It's been crashing on me, so I'm still reluctant to be sharing that with people. Um, so we're going to have to do some debugging, or I don't know. It, it just may be a lost cause because it's it's really complicated. Studio creates backup files in a certain folder. And when you use it a lot, you'll have these folders with hundreds or thousands of files across your computer. And actually, when I ran this initially, if I was working on something, it creates a lot of different instances of it. So I ran this tool and I actually had to make a couple tweaks to it. That's why it's here to get it to run properly. It looks for all the folders, you know, with a certain folder name. And I had years ago, Maestria, I think it didn't have a default name. And I told them, I think it said backup, but I'm like, look, a lot of programs might use the term backup. Let's make it HK Studio backup. And that way it's unique. And so I loop over across all of them and delete any of them. We have an example. I'll try to remember to put the URL. But if you look on my, on my website, it's called, let me just, pull up my pretty link tool here because I, I saw it earlier delete delete folders so if you go to the automer slash delete folders you'll be able to find what that did. you'll be able to find that download and what you can do is give it a name of a folder and it'll search across and you say where do you want to search across and it looks across everything beneath that recursively and we'll delete anything and everything with that folder or files inside that folder so it's very helpful um this pdl it's actually a People Data Labs, I'm trying to do a better job finding ideal prospects. And so what this does, it's an API call to People Data Labs. And when I get people that sign up for my newsletter, um, I'm going to start pushing them through that email address. You can append demographic and psychographic information. Um, I've been looking at a lot of different APIs. Some of them charge more than others. Some of them are reliable than others. This is one I was playing with. And let me see. I think I actually had that open here. Yeah, the people that depend. So this is my my Gmail. Let's see if it what it comes back with. Um, I don't think I need that anymore. Run it. Let me hit my hotkey. Oh wow, that was fast. So this is the information it pulled back on me. So you can see. Oh yep, got my phone number. Got my oh, that, that was my old address. But you get the idea, right? Crazy fast. So I'll loop over. Um, they give you a certain a free calls every month. Um, but it, it, and it's not horrible, but um, each one of these calls is going to cost money. So you got to be, you know, smart about how you use it. But yeah, that's uh, that's the people data lab clip share. Now, this is really cool is if I come in here, I'll, I'll highlight something. And I'll hit alt C that takes that text and it shoves it into a file that is in Dropbox that also I share with Isaiah and Irfan. Now they could hit Alt V, it's whatever hotkey you want, right? But we have an Alt C to copy, Alt V to paste. When one of them would hit Alt V, it would take what's in that file, shove it into their clipboard and then paste it. So it basically allows us to share the clipboard and we can share either text or files across our computers. So really great way to, um, to when you're working with other team members or if you have a laptop or something you wanna share your stuff, 
really, really helpful to to have that tool. Um, it, it just it's it's crazy helpful. I'm amazed I hadn't I had Irfan converted over to V2 uh, last week, and so that's why it's up in here. But we're using it a lot and loving it. Um, that's still part of that. The drip campaign. Now, when you sign up, if you go to theautomator.com, you'll see in the far right it says sign up for the newsletter, which you, some of you hopefully are members of the the newsletter. I send out every week. I send out a, a newsletter on what we've done and you know some helpful tips and stuff. Well, now when you come into the drip campaign, everyone that comes in, I have a, a drip campaign of twenty two emails teaching people how to use Auto Hotkey. And so we we're when you come in, you flow into that drip campaign. I think it goes every two or three days. And it's really, I, I'm, it's one I'm really proud that I did. It's going to help a lot of people. And we might make some sales for our hotkey courses, right? But it, it really helps you baby step into it, not too much at one time. And we made it where you can jump around if you're looking for another lecture. It's actually links to a web page that has all the 22 emails that you can jump around at any point in time and want, read that lesson or watch it. We have videos and things tied to it with downloads. So it's a really great program. Our drip campaign, I call this our poor man's drip campaign. It's written in AutoHotKey. It uses the Mailgun API for deploying. And we noticed the other day, somehow, we were having an issue with Dropbox, it turns out. that was It was locking the database and then sending this uh, uh, the wrong email. So that was a bummer, but we did some more tweaks to it. So we think we fixed that. Um, in Environment Manager. Now, this one, let me see if I can actually run this. Oh, that's the V1. Let's see the V2. So Irfan adapted this. I had an example that he, he usually I have an example that he goes and, you know, flushes it out and makes it actually robust and work. What's cool is if you go to update your system path, it's kind of hard to find. And even then it's kind of hard to understand how to, what you need to update. So what this does is right now it looks for an executable. I think we'll have to add it to where you can have a batch file. Um, but, you know, if you want to be able to run like Word from any folder anywhere, if you add it to your system path, um, then you can just say Word. You don't have to put the full path to Word, to MS Word. You just put word.exe and then the, the parameters you want to it. So this allows you to select an executable. You find an executable and it will update. I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to do it. it. This is your system path here. And we also made it a little prettier because um, the these weren't consistent ending in backslashes. And so we don't actually edit your path. We just say, hey, let's display it that way. And also, this isn't the most current one because what we change is if there are system ones, we don't actually allow you. Oh, oh, actually, no, it is right. So, see, I can't, I can't delete that because that's actually a system one. That's not something that that was manually done. But this one is not part of the system path. Something that it doesn't have. It's not that critical. So I could delete it. So you can either add or delete stuff, and you can do multiples and add them and stuff. So it's a great simple way. We haven't set that download yet. It's not available yet. It'll be out soon. This one. It's just checking to see your executables. It was one Irfian um, went off in a little bit different direction um, to, to find a list of executables that are in your path. And I'm like, that's not the goal of that script, but it's still helpful, right? So we, we I think it just broke that in a separate one. Abirium, we, this was one of his top five. If you watch our video with Irfian, um, actually, we're, sorry, we made a separate video walking through how to kind of use Abirium with the basics. It's the, our 19th way we discovered how to automate programs with AutoHotKey. It should be sim simpler than UIA is, yet it still kind of relies on UIA, um, but you're kind of doing web request API calls to a program, which is really fascinating. But if you know web requests, API calls, it's great because you don't have to learn all the UIA object stuff, which is really much more complicated. So we don't have a discovery tool for that yet, but we're starting to look into that. Um, the Chrome Learner, now this one, we never released it, but if you've ever used our IWB2 Learner tool, which was great for IE because I could drag something into an IE window and get the element, get the ID, get the uh, you know different types of paths and things to identify it. We wrote one years ago in Chrome. However, because of Chrome itself um, and some issues, it was buggy. And so we never released it because we just, it was just a bad experience. Now, Irfan said, after learning a bit more of doing web driver stuff, I forget what we were working on, but he's like, now I understand how to fix that. So he's going to update that. The in prompt assistant, we're still prompt assistant. Let me launch my version. I'm just a good idea. So this is the GUI part of it, but anything in here, it's for doing snippets and now for um, launching auto hotkey scripts uh, and and whatnot. But um, in here, like let's see if I do my if I want to do my trigger. So I'm gonna this I called it up. This is that menu you just saw, right? And I'll oh look, I have a, a hi Jeff here. So it says hello Jeff, right? It dumps in. Where was that? What was that? Here we go. 
So Siri says, hello, Jeff. It jumps in your snippet. It drops it into wherever you are in your editor. Uh, we're configuring this now also where if it begins with a certain thing, it will launch either a file or a folder or an auto hotkey script. So um, we haven't pushed that update out yet. But Isaias, what we realized was Irfan was going crazy, adding a lot of stuff. I asked him to work through like the wooden, the API syntax writer. Um, we're going to add our Excel library and stuff to really help people write code, right? Um, what When he was doing it, the icons were, there were hundreds and hundreds of icons and some of them were really quote unquote big in file size. And Isaias realized, he didn't realize at the time how many icons there was going to be. So at the beginning, we didn't plan too much in that, but what he realized was like, that's actually slowing down the, the process. So he, he did some stuff where he is storing the icon in a unique way and then referencing it. And that way it now, instead of having 30 icons of the same one, and we're shrinking the file size down to uh, where these are, because some of these were like 17 megs or something. It was a crazy number, right? Even though you're like, that's stupid. Um, yeah. So we, we've, we're, we're working around that. That'll be released pretty soon, but that's what we've been working on with that. Um, now our notify class this is really awesome now we're man i was really hoping we could release a video on it yesterday we didn't quite get to it but um, we we now have seven different files no, with really clear examples each file has often i'd say three to five examples in them on how to use our notify and that when i copied like when i use my alt c to copy from clipshare this is an example of the notify class Right. So you can have images in it. You can have you can change the background. You can have a sound. You can even have callbacks where you wait for you to click it. You can have it up for a certain time. You can have it hide. Lots of really, really cool stuff. And it's easy, super easy to use. You don't have to understand classes and objects in order to use it. You do have to understand. Well, I should say objects, maybe key value pairs. You got to understand that. But it's very, very simple to use. Um, so that goes through all these. This one actually. Uh, we, we Because you can have icons, and also the icons are different depending on what OS you're using. I had Irfan borrow an example I had where now we list, we go pull the icons out of a DLL. So if you wanted to use this one, now see when I click it, it says, okay, that's number 220, but it puts it on the clipboard. This makes it easier to use that notify class. So this tool is built into our notify class. Uh, makes it easy if you want to pick a select icon. Now, of course, you can add your own. You can point to an executable, but... This is just cool because it's it's right there. Um, this active scale monitoring, I actually used this before I started the video. I can hit Windows like two. And notice here also, this is our another example of our notify class telling me, hey, now I, I just jumped that to 250. Now I'm going to hit Windows one and it'll put it back to 125, right? And we notify you, but it looks where your mouse is. And when you move your mouse over a given window, it will apply that um setting that you've configured in the side the tool and we have a video on that and that that is on our website so you can take a look for that um list manager that's still our queue stuff the old menu Citrix writer now isaias converted this to v2 um, we're not quite 100 percent done yet and we're working on it because our discovery tool is going to use it but it um if you have the older style menus like actually i think these would probably work uh, you can pro let's see if i can launch it i don't know oh there we go let me try to drag this to this tool Oh, bummer. Well, let's continue to see if it still works. Bummer. Let's see if I do it on a um, a site window because site has the the older menus. There we go. So, and I think if I control click, yeah, it runs it. So the control clicking will run it. But if I just um, click it, I get the code and now I can paste this and that will actually trigger that action. So it's a kick butt if you have the older menus, if you're automating a program that has these older menus. Um, and also it's not sending keystrokes. If you saw, it's doing a post message, which is really an API call, right? So it's not saying, hey, click here and click here. There's an ID for this command and we identify it and then we trigger it with this, um, this 106, I think is the unique ID for that. So really, really helpful. Um, that's part of our discovery tool, but we were converted that to V2 because we had it in V1. Uh, and that, yeah, that discovery tool is really, really cool. Um, but we'll make another video. We, we released one on it, but it allows you basically to drag onto a program and see the options of, at least some of the options that are available for you to automate a given program with. Because for noobs, even for us, it takes time, right? And this tool not only does that, but then you can switch between some of the inspection tools like the UIA viewer and a, um, 
ACC viewer and that menu tool I just mentioned um, and Windows Spy and other stuff, right? Makes it puts them all together for you. makes it really simple. So that one we'll be getting out maybe next week. Maybe I can't promise it, but it's coming. Um, again, prompt assistant replacing side quotes. The boy that was this this replacing side quotes. Um, it was part of a, a clear bit offers you that if you put a pixel on your website, you can track and every week get information about who's. Let me go ahead and pull up the website. I just remembered what I'll do is I'll look at my emails. Who visited the automator? So each week, right, usually right before the hero calls, I get an email. And I can go look at corporate graphic information about people, you know, companies, but it's, of course, people behind the companies that have visited the automator. Um, and it provides a lot of a crazy amount of data, right? So in the web page, I can look at this kind of stuff. What's cool is I can download these files. Well, these files don't have uh, structured data in the sense that each one row, well, theoretically, one row is one company visit. Or, or one company, but it's you know, could have visited multiple times, but um, it's often wasn't because of how they quote encapsulated the new lines. For some reason, Excel and other tools weren't processing it properly, and then also we ran into issues with other characters. Just it, it was just a hot mess, and not every file had the same columns, even when you took care of that other one. So we had to write a script, and we wrote we we have a video on it, but um, it was really like two and a half hours long. Of processing them um, it, it gives us a file after a lot of work i import it into sbss um, and then you can see now this is a we get a nice now it's a really really wide file and it actually needs a lot of restructuring still but i get data on who's visited the automator and then like the tech that they use the kind of technology at that company their sic codes or neic codes um crazy amount of stuff all for free right so it's great about i can see who's visited and the pages uh, this is one Look at this one alone. This is one field, top pages, and inside it, there's, hey, there were 22 visits to this URL. There were 12 visits to this URL. So in SPSS, just to get it done quickly, I have a macro that I can tell it what to parse on. And so here it broke those into separate top pages visited, uh, but then I still have to do it again off of the 12 visits, and that should be separate fields, right? And then I need to stack it all, so a lot more work to be done, but... Um, let's get it back to the topic here of what we did. That's what this replace inside quotes that we were working on. It's really crazy. Um, the simple supply show border. That's really cool. I don't think I can run this. Um, and I'm not even sure how it would work right now, but we're putting an outline on things, depending if the run is an admin or not. So that'll be added to the simple spy here pretty soon. Um, and our automator spy, that's really cool. I, I, I'm really happy with this is we've totally rethought the tool. Um, and we also have, so control, if you move over something and press control, then it updates instead of it always doing it, which drove us nuts. Um, but there's even more, because if this tool was an admin, it would, let me, I think I launched PayShop Pro as an admin, which I know that that's an old program, but um, now notice, oh, that's funny. Um, so there's little something, see that, that the, I think because my DPI, we didn't take that into account. So the DPI is a little off, but that says, hey, the automator's launched as an admin. But if I click this tool, the Pink Shop Pro tool, it's only on the screen. But notice it it tells you, hey, that's an admin, right? So we're we're almost ready to release this. There's some other real great benefits too, but we'll include that in the video itself when we when we finish it. Obviously, I'll have to tell Isaiah that the uh, the DPI isn't being adjusted in the borders. Um, so that that's a fun one to fix. Uh, it's honestly, we've, we've kind of gotten that down where it's not such a big problem, but yeah, uh, it's a little bit of annoying. Um, let's see here. Show order, uh, kind of, these are still the same. This is our discovery tool. I'll, I'll launch real quick just to give you an idea, right? So when we drag onto a program, it tells you both how hard, this is our ratings, how how difficult they'll be to automate You know the, the approach, and we have some links to it, and we're going to add a lot more resources to this. Also, um, and you can launch the steps recorder, which is a built-in tool, Windows, I think back to Windows 7, maybe, but it could be, could be 8. Uh, but you can actually use that to help document stuff. Um, and then this is the automator spy, but the ultimate spy, that was actually the one I was thinking of. Let me launch that one. This one, we, we leveraged the discovery tool in it. We still have that. However, here, oh, it's not there. Okay, well, I, I have the wrong version of it, but... um. What we have is it allows you to switch between them. So I'll have to figure out where the right one of that is. 
um, Facebook. We're doing a project for a buddy of mine. Uh, their advertising tool for targeting on based on geolocation is a real nightmare to work with. So we're automating it, looking at the API behind the scenes because the public API doesn't allow you to do it. So we're detecting what the browser is doing and then we're going to imitate the browser, I think is the approach we're going to have to take. But yeah, that, that'll really take care of that. Uh, more stuff on that. We did some work for Carol. Carol's auto hockey member. So um, she does, she parses a lot of text and was doing it manually. This is her main job and she does it manually. And God love her for sticking with it. Cause like, wow, it's, a, it's would be really painful to be doing it. And so we're automating a lot of the stuff she does in, it's awesome because you can see she's very organized and knows her data really well. So it, it's not a lot of discovery of what needs to get done. It's, hey, go solve this. And we're coming up with some really fun, interesting ways to help her with that. And it's really cool. I wish we could share it to show you, but it's all privileged data. So we can't really demonstrate it. But it's a good one to learn of like parsing text is so critical and uh, how you go about it. So th um, this next one's a flat file. That's actually the tool that runs. It's not really meant to be uh, something we'd share um, unless you're using the Clearbit tool and we can give you this, but it, it merges all the files for us and then deals with those columns out of order and stuff. HK Studio, person is, that was, I was testing other APIs for pulling data from companies. Um, I was also, before I talked to Zayce about him merging it with AutoHotKey, I was just thinking about using ADO because with ADO, you can connect to any, ADO is built into computers way before even XP even, right? It's a data object that you can use SQL on local CSV files. So I thought maybe I could open each file with ADO and then just merge them inside of a database structure. Um, that might make it easier. And then we just, Zayas just did object. We used objects and created key value pairs and stuff to do it. Uh, obviously, this is my main auto hotkey script, which I'm sure I made some changes to. Hot strings. This, this is kind of like Clipster, but it's for V1 but um, allows you to to put in hot strings in this example, or, a, or a, we can have pictures, or we can have um, hyperlinks you can build. And when you hit your hot, when you type your hot string, it will paste instead of sending the text because a lot of the Windows tools these days are really either lagging or just having issues accepting the text that you send to them with AutoHotKey. It's not really an AutoHotKey issue. It's more about a Windows issue, but um, yeah. Well, does it really matter, right? So Clipster, which is what this tool was the precursor to it, uh, it, it really, it's cool because it's sending, it's pasting in that stuff. And then of course restores your clipboard so you don't have to lose that. Um, this was one where I realized with LinkedIn, um, Maestrith and I solved the problem of that line breaking, replacing within double quoted characters. And we had done that like 10 years ago easily. Um, so I went back to see what he did just to help Isaiah work through a problem. And this media player, I use this thing like every day. Let me launch it. I'll launch it just so you can see. It um, It basically allows me, I can pick uh, a folder. And if I select this, I won't do it because then we'll have copyright issues. But it loops over all the files and folders beneath it. And I, I was talking to Isaiah and Nerfan the other day, and they mentioned in V2, there's a new way that you can select this. So it's not so limited. However, when we were out right after we finished that call, I'm like, hey, Irfan, convert this thing to that one so it's easier. It's in V2 and everything. It's a real simple script, but it's uh I, I use it every day. And what I realized was, well, wait a minute, you know what would be really cool is if I could hit a button, because often we're we spend all day in Zoom, right? And I want to listen to music, but I don't want them to have to listen to my music. So I want to increase and decrease the volume of my media player, not all my volume. Right. So because then if I decrease it down, I can't hear them. I, you know, they can't hear the music, but I can't hear them. So I said, well, you know, maybe we should do a rethink this and use the Windows media player because there's a comm object for it. And then we could programmatically adjust the volume on the Windows media player. And that way I can turn it easily, turn it up and down instead of right now I use NurseSoft with my stream deck and I can press a key and increase and decrease the volume. But if we use the media player, then anyone can do it. You can assign a hotkey to it and be really simple to use without including an executable. So uh, that, that's being done there. Um, and apparently I, oh yeah, I, I downloaded an updated version of uh, QAP because I still have so much in that, right? It's a, it's a really great tool from Jean Alon for, doing 8 million things. So hope you enjoyed that video. Um, like I said, I'll try to remember, do these at least once a week or, or at least once a month, right? But um, to go over stuff that we've done, gives you an idea, you know, that was just that week. Um, we, we, we get a lot of, you know, 
this is all we do, right? So, yeah, if you're wanting to learn auto hockey, we haven't released a course this last week, but the week, a couple of weeks before, we released the Intermediate Auto Hockey in V2, which is a solid course. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Have a great day. Cheers.